All right, so we have some more Final Fantasy 16 news. This one having to do with the Rising Tide DLC and how it's going to provide us with a new epilogue that kind of clears up the events of the end of the game and apparently is going to involve Clive to a degree. So if any of that sounds cool to you, feel free to click the like button. And if you're new here and you'd like to support the channel, you can subscribe and leave a comment. It really does go a long way to help out my channel. So this interview comes to us from Famitsu where they sat down with Yoshi P, who is the producer of Final Fantasy 16, as well as Kudrioka, who is the director of the Rising Tide DLC. Now, this was translated by Audrey on Twitter. However, if you would like to read through it yourself via Google Translate or whatnot, I'll leave a link in the description to the article if you'd like to read at your own leisure. But anyway, they're describing this ending of the DLC to be kind of a conclusion of sorts that will give you the most hope. So we start off first with Kudrioka, and he says, I can't reveal the exact details, but we have prepared a comprehensive epilogue quest that unlocks after clearing both DLCs sees as an expression of gratitude to the fans. It's a quest that will make you go, oh, is that so? Yoshi P then chimes in by saying the epilogue connects to all that Clive has done thus far in the story, taking place in the world of Final Fantasy 16. It's a conclusion of sorts. Kudrioka then punctuates it by saying, perhaps this is something in the DLC that might give you the most hope. By playing this quest, its contents will allow you to feel that the world is safe after all. Now this to me is a little odd but it's also very interesting because i kind of feel like the epilogue that we got with the base game kind of already does that it shows us that the world is indeed okay and to kind of go over things very briefly uh the ending of the game essentially has clive sacrificing himself to rid the world of magic and hopefully bring it back to an age where people can start relying on one another not relying solely on magic and hopefully getting rid of that caste system that had been built up over time where you've got the people who are on the bottom the people above running the show and hopefully just bring people together and by eliminating magic hopefully that also means eliminating a lot of the fiends that were roaming the earth and in the most succinct way possible the ending of the game clive unleashes the spell he's blasted from the lair of ultima and he lands on a beach where he is seemingly dying his body is starting to petrify and we see him lying on the sand reaching up for the moon his arm drops and it looks like he's starting to die it then cuts to the hideaway where we see jill looking up at the moon and there's this red dwarf star. Now this red dwarf star is something we saw at the beginning of the game with young Clive and young Jill and I never knew the significance of it. I always assumed that it was supposed to represent maybe Clive or the relationship between Clive and Jill but either way Jill sees that red dwarf star burn out and that is a signifier to her that Clive is not coming back. So she runs out, she breaks down, Torgal finds her and even Torgal knows that something isn't quite right and I think he can sense that Clive is gone. And I'm getting kind of emotional thinking about that ending because it is a really, uh, you know, it's bittersweet because it's a beautiful ending the way it's directed and composed with the music but it's also sad because, you know, Clive is dead. Now, if you take that ending right there just on its own on face value, yeah. Clive is dead, but he saved the world. Now we go through the credits and we're given an epilogue where we see two young boys outside. They're collecting wood for their mom to start a fire. One of the boys eventually does start a fire and he does it normally. He's not using magic. He's using the wood, rock, and flint. Eventually he gets that fire going, runs outside to join his brother and their puppy, which, you know, they both kind of resemble young Clive and Joshua and Torgal, which is kind of cute, but they go outside to play. But as he's starting the fire, his mom keeps bringing up, oh, this fairy tale that you keep talking about and you keep reading. And we see a book on a table called Final Fantasy, written by Joshua Rosfield. Now the question that I have, and I've had this question since I finished 16 last year, who wrote this goddamn book? Because there's a few different theories that people have gone through to try and explain the ending of that game with its epilogue. Now the first theory is that maybe it was Joshua that wrote the book because there's this moment before Clive sacrifices himself where he goes to Joshua's dead body, he hugs him and his life essentially flashes before his eyes. And we see young Joshua being born, we see young Clive, we see him being knighted. All of these incredible moments that they spent together just kind of happen. And we see Clive put his hand above the chest of Joshua and we see what looks to be the phoenix flame appear. And at this point, Joshua is bloody. And after this flame appears and then disappears, Joshua is seemingly cleaned up. The blood's gone. 
and we don't know what happens. So is that a situation where maybe Clive used the last of his power to bring back Joshua and to make sure he's safe? Or is it just a situation that in his last moments, he wanted to do right by his younger brother and clean him up before he said goodbye? I think that might be uh, the uh, simplest answer. The other theory is that maybe Clive survived. He laid on the beach, but he didn't die. He found his way back to Jill and everyone at the hideaway. And as an homage, a memory to his brother, he writes the book, Final Fantasy, takes the name of Joshua because he has a habit of taking other people's names. <laughs> he took SIDS earlier in the game and he pens that book just to kind of commemorate the memory of his brother and the things that they both went through. Because they do drop a lot of hints throughout the game, whether it's main quests or side quests, about Clive writing a book. Even my guy Harpo Crates tells Clive, you know, I'm gonna give you my pen and my quill and whatnot, and my ink, and one day you're gonna sit down and write a goddamn book. So they drop a lot of hints about Clive potentially, you know, writing things down. So that could potentially be the case. And either way, what I'm trying to get at here is that that epilogue seems to show that, yeah, the world is in fact okay. What Clive did had an effect because the kids are outside playing and they're safe and seemingly there's no fiends in the area or even at all. We see the wildlife, the foliage is thriving, green grass, flowers, beautiful blue sky. So everything seemingly turned out okay. And I kind of feel like the epilogue provided that information for us. But what's really interesting too is that the mom, she keeps keeps talking about this fantasy book that the kids are reading. So it kind of makes you wonder, was the tale of Final Fantasy that we played just fiction? Was it in that book? Or did Clive write that book and so much time has passed that people just forgot that it actually happened and they took it as fantasy, which that kind of sucks. <laughs> That's kind of a really bummer because everything that they went through, that sacrifice they made is now thought to be a fictional book. But I guess that's also kind of the point because Clive was willing to sacrifice himself to make sure that everything was okay. And if everything that they did is viewed as fiction, it doesn't matter because everyone's okay now. So for the Rising Tide DLC to also have another epilogue that seemingly kind of gives the players more hope and involves Clive, it really does make Make me wonder if they are going to change the ending to that game because we saw in the newest trailer there's a shot of Clive in a different form he's descending from the sky with four massive wings and I stress that maybe this is like a new upgraded power form for Clive maybe he gets like this newer devil trigger that gives him these four wings that he can unleash in battle maybe this is a snapshot of the you know the secret boss battle at the end of the Kairos gate challenge where they said it would be this really cool iconic fight with a cool character and maybe they decided, you know, what if Clive did get possessed by Ultima and this is what he looked like? And they just took that concept and threw the character into the Kairos Gate Challenge and that's who we're gonna fight. So everything's up in the air, but it's really interesting to see what they're doing because I know they said they weren't gonna change the ending, but that doesn't mean they can't add stuff <laughs> to kind of punctuate the ending and give it more context. So these words are very, very curious to me. This interview itself is really interesting because I have no idea what this epilogue could provide. I have no clue what Clive's involvement could be. Uh, but for me personally, you know, you take the ending at face value, it's a bummer of an ending, but then you throw in that epilogue and it just kind of mixes things up and makes you go, okay, maybe Clive did survive, which is why I always kind of say that the ending of 16 is a bit ambiguous. You can kind of choose to believe either Clive died or he did survive and he wrote that book. And I think it's important to remember here that the key words that they use are the players get to play this quest. So the only character that we play as in 16 is Clive, other than a brief moment where we play as, you know, little Joshua. So are we going to play as Jill in this quest? Is it a situation where since the Rising Tide takes place before the ending of the game, we finish the Rising Tide DLC, we do this quest, and then the ending still plays out as it does. So there's a lot of questions in the air. Who knows what the heck's going to happen, but I would love to hear what you guys have to think in the comments down below about these comments from Yoshi P and Kudraoka in regards to the game getting another epilogue. But with that being said, I am Curious Corduroy. That is the video. I will see you guys in the next one. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.